Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in this video, we're basically going to be finishing the series we started on creating a budget tracker using Python. So if you haven't already watched the first and second tutorial, please make sure to, that you check those out. I'll link them right about here in the video, as well as in the links in the description. So without further ado, let me just give you a quick demonstration of what we got up to in the last tutorial. So we created a basic... Um, budget tracker application GUI and uh, we added a few features that we wanted to add in terms of being able to edit and delete some entries. So here we have a really basic application where you can add in your budget related entries relating to incomes and expenses, add the amount and descriptions and then by clicking view entries you can see all of them. Then if you made a mistake for example over here, uh, let's say your income was 1000 instead of 1200, you'd click edit uh, a new window would pop up let me bring that over and then you just edit the amount so it could change this to 1000 i save that and then click ok and then basically that change gets refreshed and all of these changes are being saved to a csv file as we speak as well so it's all being handled in pandas so there's also the delete feature so we can go ahead and delete something and if we have a look at it now that's deleted so that's basically what we got up to in the second tutorial so in this tutorial what we're going to be doing is basically adding search functionality so that we can search through records so let's say we have a load of entries which most applications will do and we want to search through specific entries so looking for things by description or date we'll be able to do that as well as being able to get a monthly summary of the um income and expense as well as the savings so without further ado let's get right into it so what you want to do first of all is scroll up to the section where you have your buttons so somewhere roughly about here and at the moment we only have two so what we're going to do is add in the third and fourth buttons which are basically going to be search entry as well as monthly summary so to add the first button i'm going to do a new variable assign that to button search uh, tk button. I'm going to set that to root, so that's going to be where it's going to be placed. Text equals search entries, and then we'll give it a command. So this is basically the function that's going to be run every time we click this button. We'll assign that to search entries, and we'll create a search entries function in a second. Now that we've created this button, we actually need to place it on the screen. So we'll do self dot button search. We we'll use a grid. Uh, to to assign this and then we'll basically set it on the sixth row because fifth one's the last one we used and then we'll set it to column zero because we want it to be in the same column as the other one and we'll set column span to two uh, so that it uses two spaces and sort of centers itself on the screen now if we quickly run this i'll show you what that looks like uh no attribute okay search entry is complaining because we basically said uh, we would use the search entries function, but there is no search function. So let's quickly create a search entries function and then we'll create a parameter for self because we're in an object here. And we'll just do pass because we don't want the function to do anything just yet. Let's run this. Uh, and what we should get is a third button. And that's basically on the th on the sixth row i believe and then it's using two columns uh, two columns so that it spreads across and puts itself in the middle click the button and nothing happens because we haven't really got the function to do anything so now that the button's ready what we can do is basically start coding the um the function so what we'll do here is basically type in global df now what df is is basically all of the data that we are saving and retrieving from our csv file so every time we make an entry in an application, um, it's saved to a CSV file, and then we retrieve that data and it's stored in this variable called df. You can see that in the code up here. And if you've been following the first and second tutorial, you'll be pretty familiar with it as well. So this data frame basically has access to all of the data that we're handling. Now we want to obviously search through these entries and to be able to search through the entries, we first need to allow the user to type in what the what they're wanting to search against so we need to be able to get a search term so first off we're going to create a new window and we're going to assign that to search top as a variable and we'll use tk.top level which is basically used to create a um a new window on your screen 
uh, no, self.root because you basically need to tell it where the main screen is and our main screen is on self.root so that's what that is and we assign it a nice little title so search top dot title title that as search entry so so far we're just coding the GUI for this now we'll do search label and then create like a label which is just a bit of text now we need to tell it where to place it. We're going to place it on search top and then the text of the label. So let's just say enter search criteria. And this is obviously, we're going to be able to search across descriptions as well as dates for now. So we're going to place this right in the center of the screen. So we're just going to use pack instead of using grid because pack just puts the element at the center of the screen. Now that we have these two elements, what we're going to do is actually create the entry where the user can type their data in or the search term in. So I'm going to assign this to self so that we have access to this variable outside of the scope of this function as well. I'll, sh I'll tell you why later. So create a new variable called search entry, assign it to the object, and then tk.entry, and then tell it where to place it on the screen, obviously, on search top. And then um, self.searchentry.pack as well so that we have that in the center of the screen. Now um, we have a label that tells the user what to do we have an entry where the user can actually type in the information we need them to type in we just need a button that they can click so that once they've typed in the search term they can click that button and then our search can run so we create a button for that search button pk dot button tell it where to be placed we want it to be placed on our search top then the text is going to be search and then command like we've done with the other button, basically need to create a function that can be run every time this button is clicked. So we'll call this function perform search, and then we'll basically place this button in the center of the screen as well. Now obviously we haven't created this function just yet, so let's quickly do that. Perform search, pass in self because we're in an object, and we'll just do print um, searching. Cool. So I'll show you what this looks like so far, just so you have a better understanding. And then we can start coding the actual search function. So, so far we've just created the GUI uh, that will deal with the searching. So when we click on search entries now, we have a new window as we created, uh, we called it search top, gave it a title of search entries, and then we created a label, an entry and a button, right? So you can now type in anything in here, I don't know, something like, uh, let's say, gym. And then if we click search, it says searching for now because we haven't coded the function. But what we want instead is basically a new window that opens up and shows all the records uh, or entries that have the description search, uh, description term of gym, or anything that matches that within the date and description columns. So let's actually code that up. Now we're going to be using a bit of pandas in here. So if you're not familiar with that, I'll be linking a series to pandas for beginners in here as well. Uh, as well as in the description so make sure to check those out as well so without further ado let's now start coding this function now first things we need to remember is when the user types in a search term in this entry we want access to that right which is why we made this entry uh, we, we assigned it to self so that we can ac have access to this variable outside of the scope of this function so what we're going to do here is create a new variable called search term and then we'll do self dot search entry, which is where the user is going to type in their search entry dot get, which will basically get the value um, that's typed. And then we'll do dot lower so that we can basically convert the string to lowercase. Now what we want to do is we want to query our data frame. So we'll do global df here again so that we can access to our data frame. Uh, and then we'll create a new variable here. We'll call it filtered data frame. And then we'll basically have to query our data frame. So our data frame is basically what has all of our data, the CSV file. And then we're going to query it so that um, we can find records that match the search term. So I'm going to use an F string here. So the data frame basically has a date column, which we're going to query. So we're going to say date.string.lower because we basically want to make sure it's all in lowercase. And then dot string dot contains. Now, Dot contains is basically used if you want to check whether a specific uh, column approximately contains the characters you're giving uh, giving it. So in this case, it doesn't need to 100% match 
uh, the term, as long as it contains it, it will return that result. So that's why we use contains, because during whenever we do searches, we're not 100% sure of what we're searching for. We always use approximates. So in this, we'll just put search term, because that's going to be the term that the user is searching for. And then since we said we would also search across descriptions, we'll do or description dot str dot lower basically same thing again dot str dot contains and then we put the search term in here as well so in this way it's basically going to whatever you put in the search term it's going to check whether it matches any of the dates or whether it matches any of the descriptions and if either is satisfied it's going to return those records into this filtered uh, df variable so now that we have a clean variable with all the data that we need, we just need to create the GUI that will display this data. So create a new screen, results top, pk dot top level, we a repetition here, self dot root, and then we'll assign it, well, top, assign it a title as well, search results. Now that we have the results um, window, what we're going to do is just create a text widget on it. Now, a, as discussed in the other tutorial, um, text widget is basically just a multiple line entry. And uh, the reason why we're going to use this is so that we can display our, our results of the filtered data frame onto the screen. Um, in the entries, it's just a single line entry. So we just need something that's multiple lines and can scroll as well. So we're going to place this on results top. And then we'll do text.pack so that it covers itself across the screen and is nice and in the middle. So now that that's done, what we need to do is basically iterate through this data frame and then place those um, each of those rows into this uh, text widget right here that we created. So we'll iterate through it using a for loop. So for index comma row in filter df dot iter rows which is a function we can use to iterate through the data frame now the index is just going to be a counter so it starts from zero and then goes to x amount of rows that are in there and row is going to be each of the rows uh in the data frame so we'll do for each of the rows we'll do text.insert pk.end and now we do an f string here and then we're basically just going to put in all of our data so we have a date which is going to be the row and in the row, we want the date column. Then we have a description, which is going to be obviously the row and the description in the row. Uh, then we have a amount column as well. So that's also going to be the row, but the amount column of the row. Uh, and then lastly, we have the type. Once again, we do row. Right. Now these columns, you need to make sure that they match exactly to your data frames or your CSV files, otherwise this will not work. And then we'll just assign, um, oops, that did not mean to do that. Uh, let's scroll up a bit, Three, around here. Okay, and we just add two lines at the end just so that it's uh, nice and neat. So this should basically be it for our search function in our application, actually. If we run this, it should work pretty nicely. So let's have a look. Let's view our entries first. So we basically, at the moment, have one for income, one for groceries, and then uh, the dates are 0 on 0 on 2024. Let's try and search uh, using our search function now. I put in INC, click search. And I have a new window right here, which basically only shows me the record which matches the description I and C. You can do the same thing for the date now. I can put, uh, let's just put 2024. And like I said, there was two records for 2024. So this should return both right now. And as you can see, it has returned both because both the dates have matched. Now that's pretty much a perfectly working search function. And that's that part of the tutorial basically done and dusted. Now for the last part, which is creating a sort of uh, summary report that will basically give us a analysis by month on how much income and expense we have, as well as if we have made any savings uh, month in, month out. Thanks for watching this video so far. 
I'd like to quickly shout out GoLogin, which is a company that lets you stay anonymous while browsing different accounts online and manage your private accounts. So many of you guys are active online, developing businesses on the internet, promoting yourself on social networks, etc. And with a large number of accounts comes obviously the inconvenience and risks that you may get confused by dozens of accounts like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. At the same time, you're obviously constantly risking important data that you store in your browser in case you get banned on certain applications and you lose everything. There is a all-in-one solution to this actually, which is called Go Login. It's a secure platform for managing all your online accounts, which will have a lot of ton of security features like a unique digital footprint for each of your accounts, secure cloud storage under key and lock, digital footprint control through customization of settings, centralized access allocation for the team, etc. Now, if you guys would like to support the video because this video is affiliated, uh, I would highly recommend you guys to click the link in the description and try out for yourself the free trial of GoLogin or purchase it if it supports your needs. Thank you. So to do this, we'll just go up to our buttons again because we have to create a new button for this, um, like we did with the search. So let's just, I think we'll copy and paste just to save a bit of time here. Paste that. Now we'll change this from button search to button summary because it's going to give a summary of our expenses and income. Then we will um, change this to monthly summary. And then the name of the function obviously will need to change. We'll create a function called monthly summary in a second. Uh, copy this across. Row is going to be seven instead because we don't want to overwrite the sixth row. And then the rest can basically remain the same. Now we need to create a function that will basically um, handle the monthly summary. So create a function, def uh, monthly summary for self as an argument. Now in here, like the other functions, we need access to our data frame once again, because we'll need to go through all of the data that we have and then group it by, by month and then look at the expenses as well as the income and then work out if we have any savings or not. So first things first, let's actually create the GUI stuff. So we'll create a new window for this and then we'll assign it to the variable summary top. So tk.top level self.root, give it a title as per usual, monthly summary. Uh, now we create a text widget where we will basically place all of the data that we're trying to display so our report Create that on summary top and then we'll do text.pack as we usually do Now this is where we actually handle the data So uh, what we want to do is make sure our data frame is basically good enough to display on this text text widget and contains all of the data We want to show to the user in report format So we'll create a new variable here and call that variable um, we'll call df and then we'll just do df.copy now we do this so that we don't actually make any physical changes to our uh, like original data frame as it's being used in multiple places and we don't want to mess that up so we'll first of all need to figure out the month right because we said we'd do a monthly summary now we have dates which are basically stated in this sort of format 2024-0102 for example and the second argument is the um, is the month. It always is. So what we're going to do here is basically create a new column in our report data frame called month. And we'll say that's going to be report data frame date dot str dot split. So we're going to use a split function here. And what split will basically do is it will use this delimiter to split this string. So in this case, everywhere that there is a... Um, delimiter of dash it will basically create a list and separate these elements out so this one becomes the first element this one becomes the second element and then this one becomes the last element now which element of this list do we need we start count from zero zero one we obviously need the first element always so we'll do dot str one because that's the one we need and then dot str dot strip for safe measures as we don't want any white spaces in our column cool so that should retrieve the month uh, and create a new column with the month related data in our data frame. And <clears throat> once that's done, we should basically be able to use a group by method to group by month and then get an amount sum. 
So create a new variable here and call that monthly income. Assign that to report df.query. And basically, since we're looking at only income here, we're going to query only the income related um, entries. And then once I have them, I will use the group by function on them to basically aggregate them by month. And then I will do amount oops, amount dot sum. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to query all the rows that have type equals income. And then once it's done that, it's going to group them up by the month. So if there's multiple records for January, it will group those January records up. And then whatever amounts are duplicated, it will sum them up together nicely. Then we do the same thing for monthly expense um, report df.query type equals expense this time instead. And the rest pretty much stays the same. We still group by month and get the sum of the amount. Now that we have everything that we need, kind of, what we're going to do is take the data that's returned in this two, which is just going to be um, the month and the amount summed up together and create a new data frame which is going to be called a summary data frame so summary data frame equals pd dot data frame and in here we're basically going to say first column is going to be income that's going to be assigned to the monthly income column second one is going to be expense and that's going to be assigned to the monthly expense column Explain data, sorry. And then we'll just fill any NAND values with zero in case there are any. So now that that's done, what we want to do is work out our savings as well, because we now have income related data, expense related data by month, and we also want to include the savings. So we'll create a new column in, in the summary DF called savings. And that's basically going to be assigned to the income minus the expense so it's basically going to be whatever you're making deducted by whatever you're spending that's the savings that you have pretty simple stuff now um, that we have everything that we need in our summary df which is income expense and savings by month what we will do is use the text widget to insert all that data so text.insert pk.end and then summary df and you can use an option called to string to basically convert the whole data frame to a string and that will basically sort that out now let's run this and see if all of this has actually amounted to something hopefully no errors run it and boom as you can see um let me just click on view entries here so you can get a better overview so if i view entries we had two entries one income one expense uh so income was a thousand the expense was 300 so it shows for the month of january income 1000 expense 300 and then savings is just this uh, expenses uh, income deducted expenses deducted from the income 700 now a quick challenge for you guys if you guys are interested would be to try and add currency symbols to these using the apply function that i go through in one of my tutorials in the panda series i believe it's the third tutorial so if you guys can add that in, that would be a pretty good addition to this program. Try and add currency signs as well as commas and stuff in um, tens and thousands places. Um, and that's pretty much it, actually. So if we wanted to, we could add another record for a different month just to should prove to you guys that this actually works. So I'll do 0102-2024. Description is going to be test item. Amount is going to be... 100 and uh, this will just be an expense so let's just add this entry click on monthly summary and as you can see we have a second month that just got added in because we just did an entry for february we obviously didn't declare any income that's why it's zero and then we said we had an expense of 100 and then the savings are minus 100 gosh and that's pretty much it i hope you guys have really enjoyed this uh, series with relates with regards to creating a budget tracker in python and using pandas uh, if you guys have any ideas or suggestions for future videos, let me know as usual and I'll try and get those done as soon as I can. Apart from that guys, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe as I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers and I'll see your beautiful faces in the next one. Peace.